Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord as we celebrate and worship today. And uh, I did want to mention a couple of a birthday and an anniversary. I know uh, Chris and Demi had an anniversary. In fact, they took a trip recently. So let's wish them a happy anniversary. <laughs> and a happy birthday to Sherry. Sherry's up here. Yeah. Anybody else have a birthday or anniversary? Oh, Chris. Chris has a birthday. You had a birthday. Wonderful. Happy birthday. <laughs> Wonderful. Do you want to sing? Let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you. Wonderful. If you look in the bulletin today, you'll also notice we had a wonderful service for Helen Jackson uh, this, Wednesday, this past Wednesday, and the flowers are uh, from the family uh, to remember her and just to celebrate her life, and what a wonderful, wonderful woman. Uh, she was 102, our eldest member, and uh, we packed the house, bringing folks in from around the community, and friends and family gathered and that was a very special event. In fact, the family asked me if there were any chocolates left over. That was her thing, to have uh, chocolates uh, at her home and bring sweetness to the world. But they were all gone. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that was a real treat. Wonderful. We also are excited today because we uh, have a special uh, mission moment. And I'm going to let Sherry introduce our speaker Good morning. I'm very, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Danielle Doss, the new executive director of Second Chance Society. Um, Danielle brings over 15 years of experience in the nonprofit sector with a background in nonprofit management from the University of Central Florida. She has a passion for empowering change and enhancing self sufficiency among the homeless and low income families. And she has led impactful programs supported by prestigious organizations such as the Annie E. Casey Foundation and United Way. In addition to her role at Second Chance Society, Danielle serves in various consulting and volunteer capacities, coaching nonprofit leaders in the performance management and systems thinking. She is committed to bridging cultural and operational gaps without, within organizations, fostering a strategic approach to achieve positive outcomes for individuals and communities alike. And I have to tell you, we are just thrilled to death at Second Chance. She has been over and above what we could even hope for. So it's my pleasure to introduce Danielle Doss. Good morning, everyone. It's a blessing always to be in the house of the Lord. Um, I have to mention, I'd be remiss if I didn't, that I actually grew up in Methodist Church, uh, attending with my grandmother and participated in lighting the candles every service and even having the chance to sing in the choir. So it's really uh, so great to be here with you all this morning. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to share with you the uh, work of Second Chance Society. Uh, we are a nonprofit that's dedicated to providing hope and support uh, to those individuals who are in need of a fresh start. And we do that by providing employment supports and vocational training in order to get them back on their feet. Uh, whether it's someone who's transitioning out of homelessness or someone who's returning from incarceration, uh, we offer second chances rooted in love and dignity. Uh, your support has always been such uh, of great value to ensuring the impact that we have of, on the lives of individuals in Broward County. And I'm so grateful for the mission that our very own Pat Owens started. And it lives today thank you, thanks to the work that this church has done through Pastor Jill, your membership, through your donations, uh, Miss Linda, who volunteers with us every Thursday, and um, our esteemed board members, Sherry Whittington and Jean Reddy. Uh, we thank you for your continued support. Uh, there's one scripture that I'd just like to share that I think so aptly uh, aligns with the mission of Second Chance Society, and it is Isaiah 43, verses 18 through 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? 
I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Our vision at Second Chance is simply this. When no one else cares, we care. When no other hope exists, we exist. And when the future seems dark, we hold up the light. And so I invite you uh, this afternoon after the service to come here more specifically about the individuals that we've served. Uh, and hello, Brett, thank you for also supporting our mission at Second Chance as well. And thank you for allowing me to have this mission moment. Let us stand and join in their opening hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. to greet one another I do want to celebrate a wedding a marriage that took place last week and that's Trace and Marianne Pumper and uh, Benny her son is here as well we're excited for them 
And now if you'll turn and greet one another, take time. I do want to draw your attention to our um, insert as well that helps us know you were here today. And if you have any prayer concerns, uh, those are collected during the offering. Uh, but this does help us know a way we can reach out to you or if you want to receive our, our um, newsletter through your email. Uh, whatever information, uh, many folks include their prayer uh, concerns and that's where we get these prayer requests on the bulletin is through your requests on that page. So we hope you will take that time. Let us prepare our hearts to hear the scripture this morning. The first comes to us, Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Hear now the word of God. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And from Mark 12, 30 and 31, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said there is no commandment greater than these. And finally from Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. <clears throat> there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are of Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth <clears throat> and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your presence. May my words become the message you have for each of us, your beloved children. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we continue our sermon series on the Wesleyan Way, the teaching of John Wesley and how it starts with the teaching of Christ, we're excited today that we partnered and showed you through Second Chance ways to love your neighbor. Ways to love God is through worship and prayer, devotion, scripture, and I wanted to point out that it starts at a very young age. So Eliana, Eliana, wait a wave. Eliana is three years old, and she was reciting the Apostles' Creed at the same time you all were reciting the Apostles' Creed. Now normally, we try to make sure a young child knows that by second grade, but Eliana and her mom and dad were working on it at home, and they sent me a little video, and I saw her proudly saying it this morning, and so I celebrate that. Can we give God praise? <clears throat> so often, Jesus told us, you know, to watch those little children. There's something to be said about the awe and the wonder of a child and how that inspires us. You see, Jesus took those two foundational commandments, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. For years, those in his Jewish tradition had over 600 laws, and no one could stand up and recite all 600. But you and I can easily recite too. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Let that sear into your mind and come from your heart. You see, it's Deuteronomy 6.5, the Shema. Love the Lord your God. God is but one God. That's from the root of the Jewish tradition. And Leviticus 19.18 is something that Jesus plucked out of those 600 laws and said, all of the law and the prophet hinge on these two. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. All of it is summed up in these two. Now Jesus tells us several places that there is no commandment greater than these two. John Wesley points to these. At first, he used the three simple rules, do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God and your neighbor, using those same texts. And then he fleshes it out. Now, sometimes people will say, well, why is Methodism called Methodism? It's because John Wesley had a method to how you live your faith. It's not some abstract idea that you say, oh, God is good, I love God, and it's all out there and nebulous. He said, no, it's tangible. How do you love God? He called it works of piety. Piety means worship and devotion. You go to church and you worship God. You read your Bible and you go deeper. In fact, he called the scripture the daily bread. Don't starve yourself, he said. Partake in the daily bread. So Wesley said there are at least seven ways to love God. Prayer and meditation, Bible study and searching the scripture. In fact, John Wesley had a way of doing it, and you may perhaps have tried this as well. You simply go and open it and read the first thing that jumps out at you. He used that to say sometimes God is trying to get your attention, and it's that simple. Open it up. What is he saying to you today? It also involves structured Bible study. In fact, John Wesley had his heartwarming experience 
at a Bible study that was also using the notes of Luther. You know, we have that window of Martin Luther. He was the father of the Protestant movement. We have the window of Wesley and his mother, Susanna. But he said sometimes it's a structured study and sometimes it's simply opening the Bible and letting God speak to you. The third was partaking in the sacraments, baptism and Holy Communion. We do Holy Communion uh, one, once a month. It's usually the first Sunday of the month. Sometimes it's more than once a month. If it's the month that has Monday, Thursday or Christmas Eve, but that is part of the way you love God. He also said fasting or sacrificing as a discipline. It could be a fast of doing something that's really unhealthy. It could be a fast of doing something with food or withholding time with food. It could be a sacrifice of a discipline, how you spend your money, reviewing your finances. The fifth is the worship and fellowship in a Christian community. The sixth is healthy living, treating our bodies as the temple of God. Now, sometimes people forget that one. I know a lot of pastors who are pretty stout because we have all these covered dishes and food and meals, so we have to watch that one. John Wesley was not stout at all. In fact, he was very active. He even wrote a little pamphlet about physical health because he was concerned that people didn't realize that's one of the ways you love God, is treating your body with respect because it's a gift from God. And the seventh was showing reverence and God, for God and respect for others in your outlook and your attitude. This is how we love God. Now love of neighbor, he actually called works of mercy. Mercy is a noun which means a mission or an act performed to alleviate the suffering of others. Again, there are seven. Charitable giving and action. Fulfilling Matthew 25, to feed the hungry, to give water to the thirsty, to clothe the naked, to shelter the homeless, to visit the sick to visit the imprisoned. The third is to use our words as instruction and teaching and advising. It showed that even the ministry of education and teaching, whether it's in a preschool or after school or it's in the home, uh, wherever we are teaching about God, that becomes a way to love our neighbor The fourth one is to use our words and deeds to encourage and bring comfort so that our words then become a way to love our neighbor. I would add listening. He didn't have it on the list, but I think it's one of the best ways to love your neighbor. Listen, listen. The fifth one is to offer forgiveness and to act as an ambassador for reconciliation in your community, in your home, in the circles where you have influence. The sixth is to oppose injustice and working to make the community more just and compassionate. And the seventh is to bury the dead with dignity. Now that one you may say, how am I loving my neighbor in that manner? Well, when there was a difficult time during Martin Luther's era, there was a church, really a, a way of acting towards people who had committed suicide that was brutal. It isolated a family. It told them the person could not be buried in the churchyard. And John Wesley thought that was appalling. Luther did too. Luther begins to say, every child of God deserves a proper and respectful burial. So that is one of the ways to love our neighbor You may not think about that in your own family because that's something a given, but we have this acknowledgement in our community as well. We actually host the Homeless Memorial here. Uh, This is be our fourth year in December. 
where we offer dignity to those who died on the streets. And then the city uh, assures us that they have had a proper burial. Now, John Wesley gave concrete examples because he knew that faith and belief are not abstract. They are not just floating around out here. They have real life, real place, real people, consequences and opportunities. John Wesley believed that that manifestation of God's love to our neighbor is one of the highest callings we have as Christ's followers. In the Bible, there are over 400 Bible verses on piety and worship and devotion, and 340 verses on mercy. And if you look particularly in the Old Testament, the angriest God ever got was when the people were parading around with pomp and circumstance and worship, but ignoring their neighbors who were hurting. His greatest anger, how dare you give me feasts and festivals and worship and splendor and do not care about the people all around you who are hurting and needing our help. In Titus 3, 5, it says, God, our Savior, appeared and he saved us. Not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his great mercy for us. Wesley is not giving us these lists of works of piety and works of mercy to earn God's favor. No, that is done on the cross of Christ. It's already been paid. But what it does, it shows us how our love of God and love of neighbor becomes a tangible and real expression of our gratitude and our faith. Wesley believed that God's Holy Spirit will help us grow in our love of our God and our neighbor through our actions and our choices, even our thoughts and our words. Now, sometimes people will say that they prefer the God of the New Testament to the God of the Old Testament. Have you ever heard anyone say that? They prefer the God of the New Testament to the God of the Old Testament, but they don't realize by saying that, they're saying it's not the same person. If you look at the Old Testament, the only time God is really angry is when we don't show mercy. Every opportunity he has given is to bring us back to live out our calling. Come home so that we can do this together. That is the way God operates. We don't need to misunderstand who God is. The prophets of the Old Testament were messengers of God, and in their message, they always tempered the justice with mercy. God has longed to forgive his people, but he does get angry, even today. It's not God of the Old Testament and God of the New Testament. It is God of all eternity. In Isaiah and Amos, God tells Israel, how can I even be happy with your worship of me when you ignore your hurting neighbors? How can I be happy until you love them and show them mercy? God says, I'd rather have mercy and justice in your community than your solemn assembly praising me. God wants to be known by his compassion and mercy, but he wants his people to be known by that as well. Isaiah 30, 18 declares the Lord longs to be gracious unto you, Isaiah 49, 13, shout for joy, for the Lord comforts his people. Isaiah 54, 10, my unfailing love will not be shaken. Whether in the Old Testament or the New Testament, the dominant face of God is love and grace and compassion. Jesus makes this most evident 
and turns and longs for his church to be known for this as well. In John 13, 35, Jesus tells us through his disciples, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Even John, the beloved disciple, had to learn this. Oftentimes, we only focus on his beautiful language of love of neighbor and love of God. But did you know that in Luke 9, 54 through 56, the brothers, James and John, became very angry because they had witnessed to some people in Samaria who did not believe in Jesus. And John says, Jesus, shall we call down from heaven fire upon them? That's John, the beloved disciple. Shall we call down fire from heaven upon those people who rejected our message? And Jesus rebukes him. He says, you have no idea what spirit you are being called to. I came not to condemn. I came to save. From that day forward, John's message shifts. John becomes the beloved disciple, the one who shares that love through his letters, through his gospel. In 1 John 3 and 4, he reminds us to guard our hearts against apathy, becoming cold to each other, and against hypocrisy, pretending to be something we are not. Long ago, Francis Schaeffer once said, biblical orthodoxy without compassion is surely the ugliest thing in the world. People who say they know the Bible forward and backwards and have no love, it's the ugliest thing the world has ever seen. Apathy is a heart grown cold. Hypocrisy is a person pretending to be something that they are not. For John, the lesson is clear. Christ's followers will be known by their love of God and their love of their neighbor. One cannot stand without the other. John says, little children, let us love not in word alone, but in deed and in truth. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. How can we say we love God, who we cannot see, and hate our brother who we do see? According to Jesus, and reiterated here by John, to be a Christian, to be a church, is to be known for our compassion known for our love of God, known for our love of neighbor. Danielle reminded us of Pat Owen who started Second Chance. She was a church member here and had her own business with her husband and after her husband passed and she was on her own, uh, she began to think there might be something else God wants me to do. You have to realize she was in her 70s. When most of us are thinking about wrapping it up and retiring, she started Second Chance Ministry and Opportunity. Not a hand out, but a hand up for those trying to get back into the workforce, for those trying to improve their life and their family. In fact, when I arrived here in 2015, uh, my very first opportunity, I was coming actually to interview and talk to the Staff Parish Committee. That was February 2015. And uh, Dr. Mark Caldwell, your pastor at that time, said, would you like to come to a dinner that evening for a second chance? And I said, sure. I didn't know what it was. And we had a beautiful dinner in our fellowship hall. And by the way, we'll have one again. You noticed in the bulletin here. Make sure you're coming to that one. That's October 17th. That was my first experience of this church and this community. We had a beautiful dinner and then clients whose lives had been changed 
began to stand up and share their story. I was moved immensely, and you will be too. This ministry started by a woman who was much older still continues to make sure persons on the fringe have an opportunity to reclaim that citizenship, that hope, that dream. You and I have opportunities all the time. I remember uh, one person saying, uh, you know, in the, the liturgy of the Holy Communion, we say something very disturbing. And I said, well, what is it? It says, we confess we have not loved you, God, with our whole heart. We failed to be an obedient church. We've not done your will. We've broken your law. We've rebelled against your love. We've not loved our neighbors. We've not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. And this young man said, is this just for this church or for all churches? I said, it's for all churches. But, but this church does a good job of reaching out to the needy and, and hearing the cries. And he said, yes, we do. But this is for all of us because we're trying and we're hoping to be listening to our neighbors, but we offer that confession because there have been times when we were too busy to listen, when we had too much distraction in our lives. And that is why we share that every Holy Communion. It's not to beat ourselves down. It's simply to say, God, we want to do better. We want to hear. We want to be known as those who love God and love our neighbor. This congregation has had a long history of partnerships. I mentioned Second Chance. We've also had one with Little Schoolhouse. We help kids with school supplies and backpacks. We help children with Christmas, particularly children who are in need. We also have one with the children's home of the Methodist Church, now called Residing Hope. We also have one with Hope South Florida, especially our homeless memorial. We actually have about 300 people that show up that second Tuesday in December in this congregation, in this community, to say we honor those who have died on the streets. We also have Kelly's Chapel. I know some of them just went yesterday uh, in Overtown, Miami, where they feed breakfast and have books uh, to help kids. And so I see two on the back row there, Beverly and Penelope, as well as Donald, who's not here today, and Stephen. These are just some of the examples. We have others who go to Hope South Florida every Thursday night to serve. I know Richard is uh, involved in that ministry. Some of you have been involved in Second Chance. I mean, I know Danielle mentioned uh, several that were on the board and also uh, reaching out to the community. I could be here for days if I listed every name and how you've loved your neighbor. John Wesley was very concerned that people who followed Christ might get hung up on opinions and battles with words. And this is what he shared. He said, I will not quarrel with any of you about my opinions. I only see that you and your heart might be right towards God. I want to know that you love God through our Lord Jesus Christ and that you love your neighbor. I desire no more. In fact, I'm sick of opinions. I'm weary to bear them. My soul loathes this frosty food. Give me a solid and substantial Christianity. Give me humble and gentle lovers of God and humanity, a person full of mercy and good faith, without partiality or hypocrisy. Give me a person laid out in the work of faith, the patience of hope, and the labor of love. Let me be with these Christians, wherever they are, and whatever opinions they have. 
Wow, wouldn't a letter like that make a big impression in our culture and world today? We show our works of piety each week in Bible study and prayer and worship. And we show our works of mercy by partnering with those local and international for mission and outreach. Internationally, we have a commitment to a Start With One in Kenya. It's a water ministry. They give water filters to families. It's affected over 10,000 families in Kenya with clean water. In fact, the stole I wear is from my friend Bill, uh, who helped start, start with one in Kenya. Uh, this was a gift from him many years ago. We have opportunities. We also have a church in Cuba, in San Cristobal, a sister church. And we've been in that sisterhood for, since 1996. And before that, we had another sisterhood with another church, actually called Park Temple in Cuba. But that building, believe it or not, was taken uh, during the Castro regime change and is used as a museum, this beautiful church that we helped build in the 1950s. There is a partnership there. And finally, in Guyana, it's an English-speaking South American country, and we have an orphanage that we partner with. If you remember um, Bill and Diana Upchurch, they introduced us to that partnership. You and I have so many opportunities to join in our love of God and love of neighbor. And God is pleased when our hearts are open and ready to serve. We offer this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our song of reflection is Sanctuary. mentioned earlier the little cards for you to let us know that you're here and any prayer concerns and information uh, those will be received during the offering we also uh, remind you that all of your gifts your tithes and your offerings enable us to continue together to love God and our neighbor and all that we do may the ushers come forward to receive our tithes and our offerings
Oh Lord, receive all of our gifts as an expression of our gratitude for your wondrous love and work in the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we be found faithful in all that we do, in all that we say, in all that we are, to bring honor and glory to you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us turn now to God in prayer. O Lord, most gracious and holy, we come before you, aware of your wondrous love throughout the Old and New Testament, especially in the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the one who calls forth in us the highest calling, the love of God and the love of neighbor, even in the love of ourself, in kindness and forgiveness. Forgive us, O Lord, when we are distracted, we are not hearing and seeing each other. Forgive us, O Lord, when we have not seen those around us crying out for your love and support. O God, we are grateful for all your servants who live out these works of piety and works of mercy in their worship and devotion, in their scripture study, in their prayer, in their servanthood, in feeding the hungry, giving water to the thirsty, and clothing the naked. Lord, for all your servants in this congregation, this community, who offer themselves to make this community more like you, more like your love. We give you thanks and praise. We pray for Second Chance and for Danielle and her leadership and for all the opportunities that are presented. Oh God, give us your strength and your hope and your resilience to meet the needs with confidence rather than feeling overwhelmed. Oh God, bring forth in each of us an opportunity to show your love to others, even to ourselves. O oh God, we are grateful for the love, the life, the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand and join in our closing hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Let us receive God's benediction and blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord work his love through you, that those who come in contact with you will see his light, his love, his hope and peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. I also invite you to join us in the parlor after the uh, recessional song, and Danielle will be there and Sherry to share a little more with us. <laughs>